when I heard Steve's introduction, I thought they put me here as a kind of a diversion to the central stem of stem cell, although it is indeed connected uh, to stem cells in many ways. Uh, so the major sort of theme of my talk is really to discover new drugs for treatment of diseases, in particular in the context of inhibitors of angiogenesis for treating cancer, among other things. Um, just to, by way of introduction, here is the, some of the basic facts about the human body which we sometimes view it as one of the most complicated machine, if you will, that have ever existed for a few sort of features here. First, it begins with a single cell, that is a fertilized egg. When we think about a complicated machines, we often think about, for example, a Boeing airplane, which has millions of pieces. But the way the airplane is constructed is that you make different parts of it and then assemble it. But in contrast to that, the way our human body is constructed is starting with a single tiny cell and then it eventually blooms into what we look like, the whole human body. It's just a fascinating and complicated process. And an adult, just to give you the level of complexity, has about 50 to 100 trillion cells. And those can be divided into well over 200 different types of tissues. So the human body is indeed very, very complicated. And with that in mind, it is perhaps not difficult to understand uh, the basis of mechanism of very various diseases. A key word is known as homeostasis, or alternatively, an intricate balance of cell growth and a turnover uh, that is essential uh, for the survival and the well-being of individuals. In fact, perturbation of this intricate balance often leads to diseases. Just to give you uh, <clears throat> a few very simple examples here, uh, too much growth of cells uh, is obviously can lead to cancer. And a too much cell death or turnover of cells can, for example, lead, to, in the case of the immune system, it leads to immunodeficiency in the case of HIV. Or neurodegeneration, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, because of excessive death of neuronal cells. So the way then the drug works, uh, work, uh, at the system level, uh, drugs work by really is restoring this balance, if you will, of the human body. Or in the case of uh, antibacterial, antiviral drugs, they are just a selectively killing the invading bacteria or virus. Um, at the molecular level, uh, most of the drugs that we've seen today work by selectively binding to proteins to modulate, either inhibit or activate their activity. Uh, in human cells, we know we have three, at least three major classes of large macromolecules. They include a DNA, RNA, and a proteins. And I should point out that the majority of drugs that we have today work by binding to proteins that are working horses in cells. We all understand that, that DNA is the information uh, encoding molecule, and RNA helps in part to convert the DNA, in, uh, DNA the information encoded DNA, into protein molecules. And the way drugs are discovered have, uh, has undergone dramatic changes. Historically, the older way by which drugs are discovered were discovered is simply by sheer luck and serendipity. Here I'm just showing you one classic example of a drug discovery. For example, in the ancient Greek uh, civilization as well as Chinese civilization, it was recognized that a willow, uh, the bark as well as leaves of willow tree can alleviate pain and a fever. 
thanks to the work of chemists and pharma uh, pharmacologists, subsequently, in fact, the active ingredient from willow tree was discovered and refreshed into what we now know as aspirin, which is perhaps one of the most consumed uh, medicine today. And based on the way that we understand how aspirin works, uh, pharmaceutical companies and academic scientists continue to discover a better uh, sort of anti-inflammatory uh, uh, drugs uh, that led to the emergence of Advil, Tylenol, and many, many other uh, drugs that belong to the same class. And it's the study of the mechanisms of these drugs that have lead, led to a deeper understanding of a critical role played by a class of hormones known as prostaglandins uh, that are involved in various uh, physiological as well as uh, pathological processes, including pain and fever. And we know now these drugs work by blocking uh, the biosynthesis of the prostaglandin family of hormones. Now the way uh, new drugs are discovered today are quite different. And here I just listed some of the major kind of steps that are involved in drug discovery today. To, because of our much deeper <coughs> understanding of the genomics and the proteomics of human diseases, oftentimes companies would start out with the selection of a drug target, in this case a specific protein target that is known to underlie a whole disease process. What ensues is then a development of an assay that is suitable for what is known as high throughput screening. And this is HTS actually. Uh, when you have this assay ready then, oftentimes you would go on to screen a collection of compounds called a chemical libraries, which numbers in the tens or hundreds of thousands. From those screens, you're going to identify what is known as a hit. We then, namely individual compounds that have showed the desirable activity against the protein target. You then try to optimize <coughs> the hit to get to a lead by modifying the structures of the compound and then increase their potency and reduce their toxicity. Eventually, you select the best you can based on various preclinical animal studies to get those or the one that has the minimal toxicity and highest efficacy. Then you begin testing this compound in humans in three different phases of clinical trials. And if uh, the compound passes these three phases, then you register with the US FDA and then you market the new drug for specific disease control indications. One thing that has to be uh, pointed out here is that this whole process now is a very time consuming and a costly process. It's estimated that today it will take close to a, over a decade and it cost somewhere between 800 million to over a billion dollars to discover and develop a single drug from start to finish. <coughs>